Hi everyone, Bones here from AusBSA Bantams and as you can see the D7 is looking a bit folded up. We've just dropped this out, dropped the, dropped the rear wheel out, dropped this section of the frame out and I'm about to bring in and show you the issues that we've got with the swing arm and its bushes and everything like that. So we'll, we'll have a look. So I'm hoping you can pick it up on the camera. So we've got an awful lot of side thrust so I've just done a feeler gauge measurement in there and uh, I'll add that to the existing shimmer, I'll make a bronze bush for that. But we've also got playing the bushes. So time to drift out the pivot pin and replace the bushes. That's about the easiest pivot pin I've ever got out on the D7, I can tell you. I wish they were all like that. So what we're looking at there is the pivot pin. And you can see either end, but... Uh, in all honesty, it looks a lot worse than what it is. The maximum wear from that diameter to that diameter is only a thou and a half. So because these aren't an available item, I'm going to have a go at polishing, polishing it out. Um, and just see how we go on. Pretty confident it will come up alright. Alright, but we'll polish it up and see how it turns out. I've given it a bit of a polish and it's got it's got most of the marks out of, out of it. It's still got a few marks and some people might turn their nose up at that and say oh you should get a new one in there or something like that where well, you can't get these new. So the only options I've got would be to weld up the end, machine it back, polish it make a new one from scratch, which I'm more than capable of doing, then the customer would probably be up for five or six hundred dollars after I've got it heat treated and all that sort of thing. So there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, just because it's not perfect, it's fine, but it'll, it's more than serviceable and it's safe. Now, the big test for me is would I do that and have it on my bike? You bet I would. So before we get into pressing out the bush, I just thought I'd show you the specialist tools that I make up for this, or have made up for this job in the past. Um, so all I do is I put a bar through here, press the bush out through there, and then when I'm pressing the bushes back in, I, I push them from the inside um, and support this side of the swing arm bearing. I really don't want to be sitting that up next to the press and, and trying to press them in straight up there because you can get some spring in your in your in your swing arm but anyway that's they're just the tools I make up obviously you can see some engraving on it that's all I know what it's for because I do have a fair few um, bantam specialist tools but we'll get over in the press and we'll um we'll press this bush out Okay, so we're just pressuring the bush out now, and as you can see, it doesn't take a whole, whole lot of pressure to be able to do that. That's it. And there's our bush in there. Okay, so now what we've got <coughs> is our new bush going in. And that's it. I'm just checking, and that's a tiny bit proud, so I've got to go down and and punch it in just a fraction more. And 
That's better. That's better. Okay, so what I've got to make now, that's the thrust washer that sits between the swing arm and the frame. Um, I had a fair bit of lateral movement, a bit too much, so I'm going to make up another one of these. So we've got the outside diameter done, faced off, I've just got to bore a hole, drill and bore a hole up the middle. Okay, so um, that's the blank, and I'm just getting ready to part that off. Okay, as you can see there, I've just started to part it off. Um, I've left on 0.05 of a millimetre because this is going to be hardened and surface ground. So that's our, that's our space, so that's obviously the machine face side, and that's where I've parted it off. Internal chamfer on both sides and we'll heat treat that now. So what I've done is case hardening powder. So we've already heated it up and put it in, it, in the case hardening powder. Now we're just heating it up and we'll quench it. So I know you blokes can't see me, well if there's any ladies watching ladies as well. But what I'm doing is uh, just lining up. Now this isn't a surface grinder, it's a tool and cutter grinder. And uh, I've just adapted it to be able to do surface grinding. So we'll get this set up and we'll get into it. So as you can see, I'm just taking my first cut on the first side. I've already made a pass just a fraction higher than this, just to ensure I've got no high spots. So that way it doesn't jam up the grinding wheel. In a past life, on a big surface grinder, I have had a job come loose jammed the wheel and made the wheel explode. And it was a big wheel too, it was about 22 inches in diameter. So I'm always a little bit tentative doing this stuff. So that's the first side done and we'll flip it over and we'll do the other side. So that's the finished, finished product. So that hopefully will give us about 0.1 of a mil or fourth hour clearance on the side float of the of the um, swing arm. Alrighty, we've got our swing arm back in, and as you can see, no movement. You know, the tiniest little bit of side thrust. You can just see the grease moving, which is exactly what I wanted. So, and obviously I've just pumped all the grease through to this just to ensure that we're getting grease all throughout the bushes on either side. So, obviously I'm just about to wipe the excess off, but very happy with that. It's a good outcome. So as you can see, swing arm shockies and rear mudguard back in. So we are slowly starting to get a a bike back together here. Alright, so if you can see those two brake shoes, you see how this one's a much lighter colour than this one over here. 
and that's the reason why. So if you remember an episode ago or before that, that's all the grease that's come out of the bearing and impregnated your brake shoe. So that's why you change your bearings out to seal bearings. That's all, that's all, that's all grease. Okay, hopefully you can see that. The spring on top is how they actually come out of the box. So they're, they're not really wrapped around enough, I don't think. So I give those a little bit of a squeeze up just to close that top loop. So the next problem we've got, I'm trying to get that into focus, and it probably won't focus, but brake shoes are just touching on the edge. And if you look at this surface here, it's pretty rough and I think what's happened is the centre bearings seized at some stage and ground away this surface here. So I'm going to make up a little shim to go in between there and the bearing just to space this, this out because this is, this is hitting uh, right in the corner of the hub. It's just sitting a bit too close. So we'll get a, we'll get a spacer spun up and we'll get it fitted up. Alright, so I've got the spacer uh, made to go in between the bearing and this brake backing plate, which has worked a treat, except you've got that much travel before the brakes come on and only that much brake rod. So, I shall ponder this. And it may be that I take a skim off the brakes, off the brake shoes and the lathe. If you take that nut off, this has only got a square in there. It has, it's not like the D ones where you can index it around a bit more. You just can't do it. Um, I may have a look to see if I've got any more of these with a square in a different position. But I'll wait and see because that's it. I've had enough for today. It's been a pretty big day, we've got a bit done. And as you can see, we've got racks on and number plate holder and all that sort of stuff. So it's been a pretty productive day and I'm pretty happy. So, okay, I think that's about it for this episode. So if you haven't subscribed before, please hit subscribe. Um, uh, to all my subscribers, old and new, thanks very much for following us. It's really great. Uh, so from all of us at Oz Banners, see you later.